Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Batchelor from Powder River Precision. Today I'm going to be going over our Extreme Series Trigger Kit for the XDM pistols. This trigger kit's based on the same principle as our other trigger kits, except for we have drastically lightened the sear and the striker safety lever. Lightening these two parts allow us to run an extremely light sear spring and still have the firearm function and get you an extremely low trigger pull weight. Um, that said, this kit isn't going to be for everybody. You know, if you're not used to an extremely light trigger pull, this kit probably isn't for you. It's meant for competitive shooters and highly skilled shooters um, who are familiar with extremely light trigger pulls. So if you don't know what a two and a half pound trigger pull is, don't, don't get this kit. Get another kit that has a, a higher trigger pull weight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and weigh these parts and show you the difference between them and our, our other parts. So, a standard sear and striker safety lever. Compared to a reduced weight safety lever and sear. So you can see we, we've cut out about half of the weight. I'm going to install this in a brand new factory XDM 4.5 inch 9mm. And before we start I'm going to go ahead and measure the trigger pull weight. Not quite six and a half pounds. I'm going to go over how to install these parts. First thing I do is remove the slide, rotate the takedown lever up, release the slide, and remove it. I start at the back of the pistol, removing the sear and striker safety lever. And I should note, it's important to rotate the takedown lever to the down position. That will release the sear that's captured by the disassembler and keep the disassembler out of the way while you're working. Remove the sear pin. I place my hand over the parts in the back so we don't lose the, uh, the springs here. Remove the sear spring and the striker safety lever spring. Push the sear down, remove the striker safety lever, and then I remove the ejector and use the ejector to push the ejector pin flush with the inside of the frame here. We can set all of those factory parts off to the side. I'm going to point out the factory setup has a sear spring and a striker safety lever spring. It's not necessary to reinstall the striker safety lever spring once the new kit is installed. <clears throat> Take the sear pin, reinstall it, push it through far enough that you can hang the new striker safety lever. The lightweight sear Install that next. Push the sear pin in far enough to hold that in place. And then install the lightweight sear spring. Again, advancing the sear pin each time to hold the part in place. Reinstall the factory ejector, or you can use one of our um, stainless steel ejectors if you'd like. I use the three and a half or the three millimeter punch to flush the sear pin with the frame rail.
push the ejector pin in so that it's flush with the outside of the frame rail. I'll compress the sear spring and then use my fingernail to place it underneath the ejector pin. Again using the 3 millimeter punch, flush the ejector pin. At this point we can check to ensure that the grip safety is working properly. And what we're looking for here is that there's minimal sear movement and that the grip safety is blocking the travel of the sear. Appears to be functioning properly. I'll pull the trigger to the rear. Now I'm going to check for the reset. Push the trigger bar down, put a little pressure on top of the safety lever, release the trigger, and the trigger bar should pop back up. That appears to be functioning properly. I'll rotate the takedown lever to the up position, and then between 10 and 12 o'clock, rotate from side to side and pull out. I'll turn it upside down to the six o'clock position and pull and rotate and it'll come out. Using the four and a half millimeter punch, start removing the trigger pin and the locking block pin. You can push these pins out, there's spring detents on each side of the pin and you'll hear it click in place. That's as far as it needs to be removed. Lift up on the locking block and there's the slide release spring. Set those off to the side, remove the slide release or slide stop, the disassembler transfer bar, and you can remove the trigger and trigger bar by grabbing the bottom of the trigger and lifting up. And then removing it from the top of the frame. Rotate the trigger bar forward to release it from the spring and remove the trigger bar from the trigger, remove the factory trigger spring and the factory trigger. Set those off to the side. This is our trigger with the built-in over travel stop and our competition trigger spring. I'll install the trigger spring into the trigger. Hold that in place. Install the trigger bar into the trigger and rotate backwards until it captures and compresses the trigger bar spring. Reinstall the back of the trigger bar in the frame, compress the spring, and install the trigger through the slot in the frame. Reinstall the disassembler transfer bar. The back of the transfer bar goes into a slot in the back of the frame, and the front of it sits in a cutout in the frame there. You can use the slide stop, set that in place. The locking block and the slide stop spring. Slide stop spring fits into the locking block there. And I use my index finger to hold that in place while I install it. I install the locking block at an angle. You can lift up on the trigger bar or on the trigger to help install that. Use a hammer to set the locking block pin and I use my finger to compress the trigger. Get that in place. Ensure that the slide stop is lined up for the, the trigger pin and finish seating that. Use a four and a half millimeter punch to ensure that they're locked into the detents. Take down lever, 
has a little cam on it. I install that with the cam at the top and then rotate it using the cam to compress the spring as you push in. Continue rotating and pushing in until it clicks into place. Then I can rotate the takedown lever to the down position. Again, I'm going to check the reset, pull the trigger to the rear, hold it, push down on the trigger bar, place my finger on top of the striker safety lever, just a little bit of pressure, release the trigger bar. Resets properly. I'm going to set the frame off to the side for a minute and start working on the slide. I'll use the four and a half millimeter punch to compress the striker spring guide and release the striker retainer plate, placing the finger over the back of the slide to capture the spring. I'll remove the striker retainer plate, being careful that the spring doesn't go flying across the room. Remove the striker spring guide, the factory factory striker spring and the striker status indicator. I use the striker status indicator to remove the striker safety retainer pin. And I hold pressure on the top of the striker safety ensuring that it doesn't pop out. Again, it can go flying across the room. Remove the pin. Release the pressure on the striker safety. And remove it. Remove the striker safety spring. I use a little bit of grease for the uh, the striker safety spring to hold it in place. Let's see if I can get a better picture of that. Just a little bit of grease on the bottom of the spring. Place that into the striker safety. Install the striker safety on the slide. If the spring tips over and gets installed tipped over, it will cause light primer strikes. So I ensure I have good spring pressure on the striker safety. Compress that. Install the striker safety retainer pin. The striker status indicator. the lightweight striker spring or reduced power striker spring, the striker spring guide, compress the striker spring guide over the striker status indicator, and reinstall the striker retainer plate. Rotate the takedown lever up on the frame. Reassemble the slide. There's your trigger travel. Reset. Take up. And we'll check the trigger pull weight.